Thank you very much. We turn now to our next item of business, which is topical questions, and we start with question number one from Alexander Burnett. Uh, can I thank the presiding officer for taking the topical question? Uh, just before I ask my question, can I firstly extend my sympathy uh, to the farmer's Tom, farmer Thomas Jackson and his family? Uh, secondly, uh, I'd like to thank the minister and her team for their speedy response and openness uh, to sharing information. Uh, and thirdly, I, I note my register of interests regarding farming. Uh, and with that, uh, can I ask the Scottish Government what assurances it can provide that it has taken all required steps to protect consumers, food safety and the farming industry following the discovery of BSE on a farm in Aberdeenshire? Minister Mary uh, I thank the, his, the member for his, for his opening remarks there. Now, clearly, it is extremely disappointing to have a confirmed case of BSE in Scotland. However, I can provide full assurances that all required steps have been taken to protect consumers, to protect food safety and the farming and food sectors. Now, we have put in place a coordinated response which has been led by Scotland's Chief Veterinary Officer and the Animal Health and Welfare Team in the Scottish Government. The response has involved the Animal and Plant Health Agency, Food Standards Scotland and the Health Protection Scotland and I can provide the following details. Now, firstly, I want to be clear that the animal that was diagnosed positive for BSE was not destined for the food chain and its carcass was disposed of appropriately. There are very strict controls in place to protect consumers from the risk of BSE. Now, these include controls on animal feed, um, the removal of the parts of cattle most likely to carry BSE infectivity, and consumers can be reassured that these important protection measures do remain in place. Now, second of all, animals on the holding were put under movement restrictions to prevent their movement off the holding. A small number of animals on the holding will be culled this week and tested as a precaution. And the Animal and Plant Health Agency will conduct a detailed investigation to seek to identify the source of the disease. And thirdly, controls to protect animal and public health that were in place before this case do remain in place now. And that includes controls on the content of animal feed and removal of the parts of cattle most likely to carry that BSE infectivity. Alexander Burnett. Uh, can I thank the Minister for her answer? Uh, can we just ask what progress has been made in identifying all the necessary information about the animal, but more importantly, all of its offspring uh, and where they are? Minister. Uh, I can assure Mr Burnett that we, of course, we are taking this very seriously and there are detailed investigations underway. Uh, and uh, some of those investigations we won't see the conclusions of in terms of identifying the, the source or the cause of BSC. If it's possible to discover that, we won't have the results of that for at least uh, perhaps a month or perhaps longer than that. Now, the, there have been four cohorts uh, and one of the offspring of the affected animal will be slaughtered. And as I said in my initial response as well, these will be tested purely as a precautionary measure uh, just to ensure but from the very limited uh, investigations that we were able uh, that we've been able to do so far uh, again we wait the outcome of the further investigations which will hopefully provide some more conclusive information that I can bring back to parliament we haven't particularly identified any particular problem in the feed but as I say this is just the very preliminary investigations that we've been able to undertake and as the details become clearer and as these uh, investigations uh, are completed. I will bring that information back to the member and, of course, back to this chamber. Alexander Burnett. Thank you, thank you, Minister, for that answer. Um, what guarantees uh, can the Scottish Government provide that all fallen stock on Scottish farms have been tested for BSE prior to this outbreak? Minister. I think, if anything, uh, as devastating as I know that this out outbreak has been, not just for the farmer involved, but I mean for the, the wider industry and the shock that it will have been to, uh, to have this case. I think, if anything, it shows that the surveillance and the measures that we've put in place since the original epidemic in the, in the 1990s ha are working because we were able to identify this case quickly. And as soon as that case was identified, the uh, other precautionary measures were put in place uh, uh, immediately and, and as soon as that was determined. So I think it shows the surveillance measures that we have in place are effective and they are working. As an example, we test around 20,000 fallen, uh, fallen stock uh, every year. So the fact that we, were, we have such... Uh, like, we do have a, a very good system for surveillance and I think the fact that we were able to pick this up and identify the case so quickly and react in the way we did shows that the work that we're undertaking and all the precautionary measures are working. Maureen Watt. 
Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, the British Veterinary Association have said that they are pleased that the comprehensive and robust veterinary surveillance system was able to quickly and effectively detect this potential risk. Both the farmer and the vet involved deserve praise for their part in identifying this case, allowing the authorities to put in place appropriate precautionary me measures. But can I ask the Minister what uh, impact this case might have on Scotland's BSE ne negligible risk status? Minister. Uh, I thank the member for that question. This recent case does mean that uh, Scotland will lose its negligible risk status, uh, but that means we're now at a controlled risk status, which is currently the same as the rest of the UK. So this is a process that we can reapply to be part of, but it takes 11 years, it will be 11 years from the birth of this affected animal before we will then be able to apply for the negligible risk status again. But this is something that we've also seen in other countries across Europe that have been affected by BSE, such as in the Republic of Ireland and in France as well, that shortly after gaining neg negligible risk status, they also had isolated cases of BSE, which meant that they lost that again shortly after. So this could well be the, the, the tail end of the epidemic that we saw in the 1990s. So again, it is a status that we can reapply for, but we are currently on the, the same status as the rest of the UK. Mike Rumbles, to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Mike Rumbles. And following on from that very question, <clears throat> because we've got now a change in our status, what implications does that have for our beef exports from Scotland? What's the, what's the change? Minister. <laughs> As far as we're aware at the moment, we're, we're determining that there will be an, a negligible risk. Again, in other countries where we've seen a similar, where they've had the negligible risk status, they've lost that and returned to controlled risk. We haven't seen any impact on their trade or, or in terms of the, the impact on their, on their wider beef sector. So we would hope that it will have, it, it won't be too much or present too much of a problem uh, for the beef sector in Scotland. But it is something we'll, we will be keeping a close watch on. Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Peter Chapman. Uh, while Scotland has one of the most rigorous uh, regimes for monitoring and detecting BSA in the world, uh, are government vets uh, reviewing our processes to see if this might be uh, driving the need for any further changes or tightening? Minister. Again, as I said in an earlier answer, I mean, I do think that the controls and the measures that we have in place have shown to be working by the very fact that we were able to pick this case up so quickly and act in, in such a quick and responsive way. But of course, if the investigations that come about as a result of this identify any possible areas for improvement, that's of course something that we would look very seriously at and very closely at uh, and uh, potentially take forward any improvements if those are to be made. Peter Chapman to be followed by Julian Martin. Thank you, President Officer, and I have to declare an interest as a farmer. Firstly, I think it's important that we put on record and we all send our support to the farmer concerned, Thomas Jackson. I am I'm reliably told that he is devastated by this case of BSE in his farm, and we must make it clear that he has done nothing wrong. And I think that's important to put on record. My question is, can the Minister tell the Chamber what extra costs and procedures are involved at slaughter? because of our downgrading from neg negligible risk to controlled risk status. Minister. I, I thank the member for that question and would completely echo the sentiments that he's, he's expressed there about the farmer involved in this. This is obviously no, no fault of his own and uh, this is understandably devastating for the farmer and for his family as well. Um, but I would say that we have seen isolated cases that have happened elsewhere where countries have had negligible status and lost that. We, of course, outweigh the outcome of the investigation into this case to see if we're in a similar situation here. Um, but we are definitely working with the farmer and we would obviously do all we can to, to try and support him. In terms of the extra costs that could be involved in terms of our losing the negligible status and uh, between that and the controlled risk, that's something I would have to look back and get back to the member on and, and give him a more detailed response on that answer. And Gillian Martin. Thank you, President Officers. The Minister and others have mentioned the discovery of BSE in one of his herds has been devastating for Thomas Jackson and his family. Can I ask what particular support the family and, and the farmer have been given and what other local beef producers should do if they have any questions around this situation? Minister. I thank the member for that question. Now, uh, I understand it, that the Animal and Plant Health Agency has uh, be provided the, the 
far they've been in touch with, in close contact with the farmer, and they've provided him with the details of the Royal Scottish Agricultural Benevolent Institution. And this is a charity which can offer practical and emotional support for farmers and their families' well-being. Uh, NFU Scotland has also obviously been in contact with the farmer, and as I understand it, they're also providing support and assistance. And I know that Mr Burnett as well is also keen to provide that support where that might be relevant and appropriate. I completely understand the member's point about the wider concern that there will be among the Aberdeenshire farming community. Uh, I would urge any farmer with concerns to seek immediate veterinary advice, but I would also say that I'm intending to attend the Thainston Mart this Friday, where I will be on hand to discuss if farmers have any concerns that they want to raise with us directly. Perhaps if they feel that there is more support or assistance we could be offering them, I'll be there to listen to those concerns to see if there's anything else that as a government we can do to help support them. Thank you very much. We turn to question two, Jackie Bailey. To ask the Scottish Government what investment is planned for the A83 at the Reston Be Thankful. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. Uh, the Member will be aware of the significant landslide that closed the A83 at the Reston Be Thankful on Tuesday, the 9th of October. At 3,000 tonnes of debris, this was the biggest landslide on the Reston Be Thankful in at least a decade. Further deteriorating weather conditions during Storm Callum caused additional secondary landslips. Since 2007, we've invested £69 million in the maintenance of this trunk road, including £11 million at the rest and be thankful on landslide mitigation measures and the local old military road diversion. The mitigation measures have had an impact, with some 2,500 tonnes of debris retained by the nets on Tuesday, the 9th of October. Looking ahead in the current financial year, a maintenance programme for the A83 totalling £6 million is being delivered. This includes £1.7 million on new roadside catch pit works for further landslide, landslide mitigation at the rest and be thankful. This is part of a £4.4 million part of work which started in 2017-18 and which will run into 2019-2020. I've arranged for an A83 task force meeting to take place on the 15th of November, where the recent incident and wider issues will be discussed with local and regional stakeholders. Jackie Bailey. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response? And I know he himself visited um, the site of the A83 during the nine-day closure, um, and I am grateful to him for doing so. He will be aware, as he's already stated, that this coincided with the closure of the old military road, which is the usual diversionary route used, and indeed people had to travel an extra um, 58 miles in, in many cases as a result of both those closures. Now, whilst the rest and be thankful is technically in my constituency, the impact is most keenly felt by residents and businesses in Mike Russell's constituency of Argyll and Butte, and I know that he has been active in raising this within the Scottish Government. So will the Cabinet Secretary join me in thanking the staff that worked tirelessly to return both roads to use, and will he ensure that the task force, which is due to meet soon, will draw in all interest to work on a solution? Cabinet Secretary. Officer, I'm grateful for the member's uh, question and I, uh, like, I would like to join my, offer my thanks to the staff who worked tirelessly um, over an extended period of time in very difficult circumstances to uh, restore the rest and be thankful. Uh, when I uh, uh, visited the site on Friday, it was very clear to me that this was a very significant landslip that had taken place. In fact, at the point when I arrived, a further landslip had actually just occurred on the site. It was the secondary landslip that then breached the fencing and actually then reached the old military road. And the decision not to open up the old military road at that point on the Tuesday was the correct one, um, as has been proven by the events that then unfolded. So the staff have carried out a fantastic job in trying to restore uh, this uh, road and having it opened on the 18th of this month. Can I say that the task force will have an opportunity to have a debrief on the events that took place over the course of the last couple of weeks, uh, which I know both uh, uh, Mike Russell and Jackie Bailey um, have a standing invitation to attend. Uh, but it's important we have an understanding of what did happen and where we're at with the mitigation measures that are taking place at the present moment and whether further measures need to be taken place, take implemented as we move forward in the months ahead. 
Jackie Bailey. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware, of course, that this isn't the first time that the Rest and Be Thankful has had to close, notwithstanding the welcome mitigation measures. But the consequences of each closure for the local economy and for local people is hugely significant. Many people now believe that there needs to be a permanent solution. And I would ask the Cabinet Secretary to agree to meet with Argyll and Butte Council to discuss this, and secondly, to commission a full options appraisal to deliver certainty for local people and businesses that rely on the A83. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, I recognise the very significant inconvenience uh, and frustration felt by those in Argyll and Butte who were affected by the uh, closure of the A83 at the rest to be thankful, and that is to be regretted. Uh, there has been a significant amount of work that's been undertaken to try and implement the mitigation measures. As I've mentioned, they have had a, an impact on the site as it stands at the present moment, uh, where the route would have closed in the past, in the past couple of years, uh, that the nets have actually prevented that from occurring. But clearly, given the events that occurred uh, in the last couple of weeks, we need to revisit this issue. Uh, the last report was completed in 2013. Uh, the red uh, recommendation is the one which was taken forward, and that work is still ongoing. There is work to install the catch pits, uh, part of which has been completed. Uh, what I've discussed with Transport Scotland when I was on site with them is there work that we could take forward more quickly in order to speed up that mitigation work. I know they're also very close to uh, securing the land to allow the, uh, the, the tree planting to take place as well, which again, if we can speed up that process, will help to support some of the mitigation work. But I'm open to looking at whether there are further measures that need to be taken forward in order to address this issue on a permanent basis. Uh, and if they are identified, then I will give it uh, every effort I can to make sure that they realise as we move forward. And Maurice Corey. <coughs> Thank you, Presiding Officer. I, I too commend the staff as well for the hard work they did in recent events on, on the A83. The A83 is the main trunk road coming into Argyll, and closure leads to people suffering fuel poverty, isolation, inability to access vital services such as hospital visits and things like that. If the most recent landslide had actually occurred hours later, there could well have been fatalities. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that no other trunk road, such as the M8, M74 and the M9 will be allowed to function at this level of disruption. Cabinet Secretary. Well, Sign Officer, as I've just mentioned, I regret the disruption was caused by this particular landslide. And anyone who knows this particular site will know of the particular challenge in topography of that uh, area. Well, there have been long standing issues with the uh, landslides in this particular uh, area of the road. Uh, the work which has been taken forward as part of the mitigation measures is to address these concerns. Uh, but clearly, given recent events uh, and given the scale of this particular landslide, uh, we need to look at where there are further measures that need to be taken forward uh, as we consider the, uh, the impact that it's recently had. So I'm uh, committed to making sure we do that, and there will no doubt the task force will want to give due consideration to that when it meets on the 15th of November. Thank you to the Minister and members. Apologies to John Finney and Donald Cameron that we weren't able to take any further supplementaries there, but we're a little bit pushed for time this afternoon.